Today's video is a part of the Ehrman List series aimed to provide insights and advice on how to accelerate revenue for companies trying to sell into the Internet of Things industry. Why start from scratch when I can provide you all of the insights of what's worked, what hasn't worked over my 25 year uh, career in one of the Internet of Things leaders, ID Systems. So today's video is how to take on the giants, what new technology providers for IoT need to understand about Fortune 100 companies. Well, what's so great about Fortune 100 companies? To start with, they're obviously very big and can benefit the most from using IoT solutions to understand where their high value assets are, how they're being used, and how they can be operated safely, more efficiently, and to generate more revenue. Another big item for companies trying to sell to these Fortune 100 customers is that what's a little for a Fortune 100 company is extremely big for a provider. So a $5 million order may be a rounding error for a Fortune 100 company, but is extremely valuable in proving the technology and driving revenue for Internet of Things providers. Plus, if you're successful with a Fortune 100 company, doing a pilot, and you install the system in one uh, facility or one distribution center, or perhaps on five to 10 uh, intermodal containers or chassis, when you see success and can determine the ROI, the potential for follow-on orders is extremely significant. So for example, at ID Systems, we achieved a 50,000 unit order with Avis Rental Car right before I left the company. That 50,000 unit order represents only 10% of the total fleet size for Avis Budget Group. So if we're successful, if ID Systems is successful with the first project, what that means is they have a significant opportunity to grow revenue tenfold to roll out to those Fortune 100 customers' complete fleet. You should know, though, that they're the most demanding customers in the world. They ask for everything to work. They expect it to work flawlessly. Any data anomalies are going to be looked at. And also, there's the champion that you may have a relationship with, but there's all the employees of the company who are used to doing business the way they've always been doing them, who potentially could be a roadblock as you embrace and install the latest and greatest technology. Also, the budget cycles are potentially very long. So what you might find is you have a successful pilot proves a great ROI, but despite the financial uh, reasons to move ahead sooner rather than later, they may have to wait another complete year for the budget cycles to support implementing the system throughout their enterprise. However, in my experience, pursuing Fortune 100 companies pays off. We had uh, significant projects that uh, grew from you know, several hundred thousand or, or a few million to tens of millions because of the size of these companies and the value that this technology brings to their operation. So what is the key to fending off big companies and winning business with Fortune 100 customers? The first and perhaps most important element is to find a champion. People talk about that all the time, but I find if you don't have a champion at the Fortune 100 customer, you're really wasting your time. You could spend three months, six months, nine months trying to convince someone that your solution will drive a great ROI and is worth their time and effort. But what you really need to do is find someone at the customer who wants to make an impression, wants to make a difference, someone who believes in the technology and the value it can bring more than you do as the salesperson or the person leading the discussion with the Fortune 100 companies. When you find a champion who wants to buy from you more than you want to sell to them, that is when you're on the right path to achieving success for a Fortune 100 company. To give you an idea, back when ID Systems started, I used a solution to land Ford Motor Company as one of our initial customers. We had the U.S. government paying for the development of a new IoT solution to track, monitor, and control forklifts. 
So what I did is I sent a one-page fax to Ford Motor Company that gives you an idea about how many years ago that was, saying we had the U.S. government funding the uh, development of a forklift tracking and monitoring system, and would you have any interest, you being Ford Motor Company, in participating in this project without paying, but to ensure that um, the outcome of this development project met the requirements of Ford Motor Company to track, monitor, and control their forklifts. So when companies think that they're getting something for nothing, very often that highlights or piques their interest in participating. And in fact, from that one-page fax, we received a message from the Advanced Technology Manufacturing Division of Ford Motor Company saying that they were indeed interested in uh, participating in a project to help track, monitor, and control their forklifts. So we had them participate. They didn't pay up front, but we were able to uh, get their buy-in, and once we completed the development contract with the Postal Service, they were one of our first commercial customers to install the system in their largest facility in Detroit, Michigan. It's very important, though, when participating with Fortune 100 companies to upfront define what the ROI is going to be. Do not get uh, caught in the trap of participating in free pilots without specifically identifying all of the key measures of success. Don't be afraid to ask what those measures of success are, and more importantly, don't be afraid to ask what happens if you are successful. If the person on the other side at the Fortune 100 company understands the value of the system and wants to buy more than you want to sell it to them, asking those difficult questions should not be met with any resistance. In fact, they should just as easily or just as importantly want to identify those challenges and obstacles before participating in a pilot because otherwise you can all be very frustrated in seeing great results in a pilot but stalling for potentially months or years after the success. So identify the key stakeholders, who's going to support the full rollout and budget before you start a free pilot. Identify the success criterion before you start a free pilot, but then feel comfortable doing the free pilot if you're comfortable with the measurements as well as the stakeholders as we just laid out. Also, it's very important in a free pilot, especially with a Fortune 100 company, to meet or exceed expectations. Do not say that the pilot's going to take three months to install and have it take six months. That puts your champion at significant risk to continue to carry the water for the technology. They need to be able to uh, identify all of the key milestones and have your assurances that you will meet those key milestones so that right off the bat the relationship is shown as one that will be successful, that the company can make commitments and meet them, and will be a successful rollout after a successful pilot. For example, with ID Systems, at one point, we had uh, gotten the order from Home Depot to install our system in four distribution centers where they had nearly 120 distribution centers after we could identify the success in those first four. Well, it took us almost a year to install four distribution centers. Unfortunately, we just really didn't have the means or the wherewithal to prioritize Home Depot all over all the other Fortune 100 customers who had more pressing concerns. Well, at the end of the year, our champion, who originally was extremely committed, said, wait a minute. If it takes a year to install four distribution centers, if we have 120 distribution centers, that means it would take nearly 30 years to roll out the system throughout the enterprise. That is a mistake that can set back the project for a very, very long time. Don't make that mistake. Make commitments and meet them, especially with Fortune 100 companies. Another element that helps when dealing with Fortune 100 companies is having patents. If a person or a champion at a Fortune 100 company is going to take a risk to do business with a smaller company compared to an IBM or an AT&T or a Westinghouse or a Verizon, then they need justification in making that decision. One of the best justifications out there are patents. 
if you have a unique technology that's patented, then that means that it's highly likely that they couldn't get that solution from anybody else. So that's going to be the cover for your champion to be able to do business with a smaller company. So make sure, even if you don't have any patents that are issued, that you have patents pending. You must have a unique technology if you're in the Internet of Things business. Find out and identify what those uniquenesses are and submit patents. It's well worth it when it comes to doing business with Fortune 100 companies. Ask those tough questions, though. Do they have a budget? Who approves the budget? When does the budget cycle get approved? Can you meet with the decision makers? This is another mistake that we've made many times. Unfortunately, very frequently, your champion can't articulate the value proposition nearly as effectively as you can. They also can't answer all the difficult questions that the decision makers will ask during the budget approval process. So it's very important that your champion understands that you're a team and has you participate in those important meetings for the approvals. That is potentially important going into the pilot so that you can agree that the success criterion is something that the budget approvers will agree is important for the Fortune 100 company to achieve, as well as um, important to understand the financial issues associated with doing pilots and what the success means. So definitely ask those tough questions and be prepared to hear answers you may not like, but if you want to do business with Fortune 100 companies, you have to evaluate what the success might mean and whether you're willing to wait and do anything to uh, continue to progress you down the path of getting the business from the largest potential users of your technology. That's just some of the most, uh, I guess, important examples of what uh, ID Systems learned uh, through 25 years of installing our system with Fortune 100 companies, doing business with the most demanding customers in the world. And if you want to learn more, you can click on the link below to follow me on social media, as well as leave a comment on your own experiences and ask any questions that I can answer in follow-up discussions. Thank you for listening today, and I look forward to continuing to keep the Ermanist followers abreast of my progress. Thank you.